Hey y'all guys, so in this video today I like to talk uh, a little bit about uh, language maintaining. Actually, as you know, I speak uh, 14 languages at different levels and so I always have a hard time maintaining all these languages. It's really difficult not to forget words uh, when I don't use a language for a while. And uh, uh, so I would like to share with you my experience with maintaining languages. And uh, I'm also eager to hear your uh, experience with it uh, and possibly uh, learn uh, other ways to maintain languages that I've never thought of or that I've never tried uh, with Constance. So let's start. Actually, I'm gonna share with you a scheme that I have developed myself and uh, I'm really um, eager to know what you think about it, especially if you happen to know a lot of languages, if you are a, a fellow polyglot, and uh, how the idea uh, came about. Actually, it all started uh, a few years ago when I suddenly bumped into a video on YouTube uh, of a girl who loves to learn uh, different languages, who loves to learn new languages, and uh, uh, in this video she talked about uh, how she learned languages, and she said that uh, she liked to learn uh, uh, one language in one day. So, for instance, uh, on Monday she always learned, uh, let's say, Spanish, on Tuesday French, and so on. So she dedicated one day entirely to a soul language. And I found this idea very cool, actually. And I said to myself, okay, why shouldn't I try it as well? Maybe it would be a good idea to dedicate a single day to a soul language. And uh, the thing is that I speak 13 languages, so it's not actually feasible. It's not uh, possible at all to dedicate uh, a day to a soul language without uh, uh, risking to lose uh, fluency in all the other languages that I know. And so I elaborated a scheme uh, which hopefully works with my uh, knowing 14 languages. So here we go with my scheme. So as you can see, I've decided to maintain uh, three languages every day plus Russian. Russian is the language that I want to focus the most uh, on right now because my level is C1 and I love to reach C2 sooner or later. I know it's hard work but I'm I'm very motivated and I'm working on it every single day so Russian is like uh, uh, the bonus language that I want to improve every single day that I want to use every single day in my daily routine and uh, of course I haven't counted Italian because it's my mother tongue so uh, I've tried to put different languages belonging to different families uh, every day um, as much as possible. Of course, it's not always possible. For instance, on Monday, I try to maintain uh, both Catalan and French plus Bulgarian. So Catalan and French belong to the same language family, which means that I can confuse, I can mix words sometimes uh, uh, even without realizing it. But uh, on the other days, for instance, on Tuesday, I have Portuguese, Swedish and Greek, which all three belong to different families. On Wednesday, I have Romanian, German, and Farsi. Thursday is dedicated to Spanish and English. So Thursday is like uh, a day where I can relax a little bit because in both Spanish and English, I have uh, a good command of the language. I have a high level. So it's basically um, mostly about listening to the language, uh, about getting exposure to the language, reading the news and watching the news and so on. Then uh, here we go again with the other languages uh, which I happen to know uh, worse so my level is lower in all these languages compared to Spanish English and Russian and so I decided that I must uh, maintain these languages more that I must study them more and so that's why on Friday Saturday and Sunday uh, I study again the these languages that is to say Catalan, Bulgarian, French, Portuguese, Swedish, Greek and uh, Farsi plus Romanian and German which I happen to know quite well but still especially Romanian I'm focusing on this language because I would like to be C1 very soon. In German I already have a C1 level but I would like to improve it as well and so I've decided to put more efforts on these languages. So uh, that's basically it. What do I actually do in order to maintain all these languages? For instance, let's say today is Monday and it's 
Catalan, French and Bulgarian's time. What do I do? So basically I just do different things. For instance, uh, if I have a lot of free time, uh, I can uh, read a book, I can make some grammar exercises for about half an hour. But if I don't have a lot of free time, uh, which is more often the case, I just uh, listen to a song, maybe I read the lyrics a little bit and have fun singing out loud and repeating words that I don't know. So this is just a matter of a few minutes uh, and uh, it's feasible actually. Maintaining is different from learning. So if I want to learn, uh, uh, I have uh, to, I have to uh, work uh, really hard, uh, especially on grammar and speaking and so on. But if I just want to maintain, uh, I can just uh, listen to music, watch uh, a TV series, watch a movie or read a book and an article online, uh, listen to a podcast and so on. So there's a lot of things that I can do actually in order to maintain languages and uh, which don't require a lot of time. So what are the pros and cons uh, of my method, of my uh, current scheme? Actually, I I've found that sometimes uh, I'm a little bit stressed. I feel a little bit stressed because uh, it's like I wake up and I say to myself, oh, today I'm going to maintain these three languages uh, while I have a lot of things to do and uh, I have to work, uh, I have uh, to, to do sports, I have to do so many things uh, during my day that I have spend enough time in order to maintain all these languages and so sometimes uh, I really feel a little bit uh, under pressure plus uh, I also think that um, by doing so I can't dedicate enough uh, uh, energy and enough attention to learning new languages like uh, Farsi which is uh, in this scheme but it's a language that I, that I have uh, recently started to learn and so I would like to improve uh, faster and also I would like to to learn uh, Ukrainian and uh, uh, with this scheme it's practically impossible to learn these languages. Uh, with this scheme I can only maintain languages because I don't have a lot of energy, I don't have enough energy in order to learn new languages. I don't have a lot of energy and I don't have enough time to do so. So uh, the only pros uh, are actually that I feel like uh, I have a more active knowledge of all these languages uh, when it comes to basic speaking. I can speak uh, uh, Greek, I can speak Catalan, I can speak Swedish without a lot of problems when it comes to daily conversations because uh, by maintaining them so often during the week uh, I have a lot of vocabulary that comes uh, actively in my mind uh, when I need it. But uh, this is the sole uh, pro actually. I think that uh, there are more cons. So actually I'm saying that I'm not sure that my method, that my current method that my current scheme uh, is good. So that's why I've decided to make this video in order to ask you um, if you have a similar experience uh, and what would you do if you were uh, in my situation? Uh, because uh, actually, um, I'm afraid of losing fluency in uh, some of the languages that I know, but I also know that it's almost impossible to maintain uh, 13 languages, because 13 languages are really a lot. So I think that it's, uh, in, it's important for me to decide which languages uh, I want to speak uh, very well and which languages uh, I can accept to speak at a lower level because uh, I, I don't see any other solutions actually. Actually, I'm considering right now to uh, try a new experiment and uh, uh, review just uh, one language uh, every day or uh, two languages every day plus uh, Russian. So that would make three languages uh, daily and not four. And uh, maybe this could be a solution because uh, um, like uh, I think that if I just uh, maintain uh, Portuguese uh, or say Catalan or French uh, uh, by using them actively just uh, once a week, uh, I don't think I'm gonna lose uh, a lot of fluency because they are languages uh, where I already have uh, a good level and uh, they are very similar to Italian. So I think that it's easy not to forget them but uh, for instance uh, Greek or Bulgarian these are languages that are um, 
that that must be uh, maintained uh, more regularly actually and more intensively so maybe i'm going to dedicate more energy to such languages plus farsi and ukrainian and less energy to languages like uh, catalan french uh, bulgarian uh, uh, catalan french uh, and uh, uh, portuguese So guys, that was basically all for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. So uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment with your experience. Uh, actually, I'm really waiting for your comments uh, because I think it's gonna be interesting to talk to you and with you about uh, language maintaining. And uh, see you soon with uh, a new video. Bye-bye, have a nice day.